what we found uh, was that the, in terms of our microbiome analysis, we found out that the lipid matrix uh, technology increased the Firmicutes to the bac bacteriotes ratio, and that favors better caloric conversion and increases resistance to the colonization of pathogens. So that's the unique thing. And then on top of that, many of our fat-soluble vitamins, A, D, and E, they have to be absorbed in a lipid um, matrix system to form micelles. And while they're embedded within this lipid, we end up with much more efficient absorption of those critical fat-soluble vitamins. And that allows us to actually reduce the dosage uh, of vitamins. Welcome back to the, another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. I'm your host, Kelly Walmsley, and I'm joined again to get today by Dr. Peter Furquette at NC State um, Department, Prestige pa Department of Poultry Science. So Dr. Furquette, thanks for joining us again. Well, thank you very much, Kelly, and it's great to talk to you again about this topic. Yeah, so we, um, just to kind of catch people up to speed, um, so we were talking about uh, lipid matrix microencapsulation um, technology that you were on the ground floor really helping to create, and it's been a little bit of your, a labor of love for you from a combination of different um, research activities, your classes, and, you know, having, you know, just a career of feed formulation, looking at vitamin stability and supply chain and uh, how we can best deliver premixes and have uh, premixes available um, with, you know, that's going to be able to survive the pelleting process and also have improved flowability. So this specifically, we covered a little bit about that technology in the previous episode. And then we talked about some of the stability and handling characteristics um, associated with it, um, with your technology. And so what about kind of moving into, so surviving from the pelleting standpoint, um, you said in the previous episode, you had some vitamins, um, that were stable for six years with this encapsulation technology. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. So it basically the lipid matrix encapsulation uses uh, medium chain fatty acid, type fats, um, you know, palm kernel oil is, is a good example of that. And it's hydrogenated. So it's a, it, you can, depending on the formulation of that matrix, you can make the, the matrix harder or softer. And because of that, you can also time release the, the nutrients um, out of that matrix. And so if you want it something a little bit softer, it can, uh, the, it will release further up in the gut make it a little harder and it'll transfer down to the lower end of the gut. So that allows for a time release of nutrients. And because of that, you know, many of the nutrients that are absorbed, trace minerals, vitamins, they are saturable transport mechanisms in the gut epithelium. And if you overwhelm them with vitamins and minerals in a free form, it basically shuts off the transport and the, the the result is there's a lot of spillage that goes on. Uh, basically, stuff doesn't get absorbed and ends up in the hindgut and ends up feeding the competitive microbiota, so, which are typically pathogens as well. And so uh, that's the unique thing about uh, this, this material is that we can get much better um, bioavailability because it's being uh, digested as fat is being digested, transferred through my cells into the and delivered to the epithelial lining and then efficiently absorbed. So what we found uh, was that the in terms of our microbiome analysis, we found out that the lipid matrix uh, technology increased the Firmicutes to the bac bacteriotes ratio, and that favors better caloric conversion and increases resistance to the colonization of pathogens. So that's the unique thing. And then on top of that, many of our fat-soluble vitamins, A, D, and E, they have to be absorbed in a lipid um, 
matrix system to form my cells. And while they're embedded within this lipid, we end up with much more efficient absorption of those critical fat soluble vitamins. And that allows us to actually reduce the dosage uh, of vitamins. So in our research, we're able to go to 70% lower vitamin and mineral uh, content or formulations than a typical commercial premix uh, because we overcome some of this competitiveness in the gut, better absorption, and time release uh, of these nutrients. Wow, that's a fascinating. How do, so? How does um, this lipid in, in encapsulation? How does it differ from other types of liquid lipid encapsulation? Well, what's different is that uh, the, f the form that we're using, we're using medium chain fatty acids, um, which in itself has some beneficial effects on gut health, gut mm -hmm. motility, and a few other things. Uh, you increase the, the medium chain fatty acids, you in enhance the reverse peristalsis, which actually improves digestion in the foregut. Uh, so that's the unique, unique combination. And we can... Um, we can change the form a little bit to actually time the release. Uh, so that's that's the unique prospect of this rather than some other kind of form of uh, lipid uh, encapsulation. And so you've found, um, you know, improvements in growth performance and health. You said that you have um, reduce the amount of vitamins or premix concentrations that you can um, include into broiler diets. What about, and I'm thinking about broiler breeders and thinking about um, using hygienizers um, and then how much over formulation that might have to occur from, you know, from that end. What about that application for broiler breeders? Have you guys looked at that? Yeah, uh, and that was one of our most exciting uh, research results that we found. You know, broiler breeders, they're either feed restricted, you know, time limit fit, fed and all those kinds of things. Then you go through these different processes and causes uh, some destruction. So uh, vitamin and trace mineral absorption and incorporation into the to the egg to support egg production and chick production is incredibly important. So our research, we found um, that the lipid matrix formulation, and that's without reducing the dose, we just kept it at the same commercial levels. We got four more eggs per hen, a three and a half percent higher uh, hen day egg production and reduced feed consumption per dozen of eggs. And we've also found up to five more chicks per hen using this lipid matrix encapsulation compared to a conventional premix, and the progeny tended to be more robust and resistant to enteric pathogens. So what, what I think is happening is that the improvement in the vitamin and mineral bioavailability by this lipid matrix premix results in better trans support of egg production and nutrient transport into the eggs. It's it's uh, I've done some work on Innovo feeding, and we found out if we can just get more nutrients into the egg, we can support better uh, chick per performance. And this is an alternative way to actually enrich the eggs with nutrients uh, that is so difficult for uh, broiler breeders and, and possibly also laying hens. Wow. And so have you done um, the research in laying hens yet as well? We haven't done a lot of research with laying hens yet. It was mostly with broiler breeders, but um, I would, I'm would i very excited to see if we can um, enhance uh, egg production towards the the end of uh, the laying phase, in particular with vitamin D and those kinds of things are so important, bioavailability of those for uh, laying hens like skeletal health and as well as eggshell formation. Uh, we think that we might be able to get a better uh, a benefit from that, but we still need to test that in a, in a long-term laying hen uh, project. Sure. And when you're talking about all the research, I just, I mean, the, um, and the results that you found, I mean, I'm just thinking about the number of students, the work hours and all of that. So how, how kind of just to put it together for us, how does that, what does that look like from a time point? I know you've said that you've been working on this for a long time, um, but like number of studies and years and all of that, what does that look like for this? 
like I said, you know, we started off this. This is my this is a journey my whole career, but uh, <laughs> it was in about 2017 that we started doing some research to test this idea. Um, the research was funded by uh, Jeffo, uh, who later on um, licensed that technology, so they have exclusive technology for that. Uh, it resulted in um, like uh, two master's students that uh, got their thesis done from it and uh, a number of undergraduates working with us. So, and then, um, and also later on, some PhD students that benefited from this as well as in, uh, as they moved on. So I, it, it was a great journey to, for capacity building for new, new nutritionists in the world, but also, um, it, it I think it fits a need and, uh, and we're looking forward to, um, getting this on the market. So, um, you know, Jeffo, uh, built a big plant to make this stuff. Um, so they, they invested close to $40 million in wow. building a plant to, with the capability to produce it, uh, and, and meet the needs. So it's a, just an alternative way of, of producing, uh, you know, a premix and they are calling it gut harmony line. So uh, that's the product line that's based on this technology. So we're really excited to see uh, this getting into the market and uh, hopefully making uh, saving on our supply chain issues. Um, because as you know, most of those vitamins are made in China and it doesn't take blocks to create a supply chain upset. So if we can decrease the dependence on that by reducing the need for that, you know, by in broiler chickens, reducing it by 70% and still getting pretty good performance, lower, better breast meat, um, less uh, drip loss from meat. We've seen better foot pads and a few other things. So I, I think it's a winner uh, and it's a technology that should be seriously considered. With science-led solutions that are sustainable, proven, and effective, BASF helps you tackle the challenges of poultry nutrition. We offer high-quality feed ingredients that enable a more sustainable production and help you achieve your animal performance targets. We call it the science of sustainable feed that succeeds. Well, very, very um, cool stuff. And uh, congratulations to you and the group and, you know, all the students that have been involved in the projects um, to get it to this point. And so um, we'll just end on that note because I think that's a great note to end on. So um, thanks again for, for joining us. I, I guess I do have one more question that I didn't get to last. Uh, so since we are on the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt po podcast, uh, Jackie Chan or Chuck Norris? Chuck Norris. <laughs> Sorry. He's just a that's it. Well, thank you, Dr. Furquette. I appreciate your time and um, sharing a little bit of your knowledge with us. So um, we look forward to maybe having you again and talking about a different topic that you've, you've discussed. So. Yeah, no problem. I look forward to the next time. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. This has been another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, and we'll see you next time. Bye.